Well, good morning, everybody. So glad you are here. We're in Frequency Part 3 today, and, uh, and we, uh, like Amy said, we were on vacation, and, and we are really excited to be back. We're going to be here for hours today. That was a test to see if you were listening. Some of you are really excited about it, so I might actually consider it. We can just get right into this uh, today. But we've been talking about how to hear the voice of God. And then for those of you who, who know how to hear the voice of God, learning how to hear him better. There's not a person in the room or online watching today that, that shouldn't desire to be able to hear God better. And so the first week we, we talked about, I'm a sheep. When you say that with me, I'm a sheep. Yeah, we, we, are, we are sheep, and if we, it says the, Jesus taught us that the shepherd or the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. And so when you recognize that you are a sheep and you follow after the Lord, that means that automatically by nature and then through relationship with him, we can actually have ears to hear the voice of God. And then last week, Pastor Kell brought a great word about you're a friend. Man, I love Colossians 1, Paul, that it's actually a song that Paul was singing and it became a New Testament song that the early church sang. And it was that we were once his enemies separated from God by our evil works and our thoughts and all those things. But then Jesus brought us over to God's side where we are blameless, where we stand before God without a single fault. Come on, that's good news right there. I was thinking about that this week and, and was thinking about how, you know, the psalm says that he's, uh, in psalms it says he separates our sin as far as the east is from the west. You know, a lot of us live like he separates our sin as far as the north is from the south. The, the only problem with that is if you go north, you'll eventually go south. If you go south, you'll eventually go north. But as long as you travel east, you'll never run into west. And as long as you travel west, you'll never run into east. So what is it saying? That, that he has so separated your sin as far as the east is from the west that Jesus will never run into your sin again. Just think about it for just a second. That he never runs into your sin again. Once you plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, forgive me. I submit myself to you. Plead your blood over my sin. Some of you are looking at me like, huh? He doesn't run into it again, so why do you? The only way you'll run into the thing that he separated from you is if you turn around and chase it. If I could drop the mic. And that's not a, a, mic, drop, a mic drop moment for me. That's Jesus. He, he said it. And so he, he chooses not to see or not to look upon what, would, what once separated us from him. Now there's relationship. There's nothing that separates us from between that that means you're a friend of God. Come on, say that. I'm a friend. So you're a sheep. You're welcome. Bye. You're a friend. You you get to be a friend of God. You you get to be friends with God. And and then today I want to talk to you about I'm a prophet. Now not I'm a prophet, but you're a prophet. Come on, say that with me. I'm a prophet. And you go, hold on, this is getting kind of crazy because there's a lot of people, not a lot, but there's a few. I'm a prophet. I'm prophet so-and-so. And so today, we're, we're not talking about the office of the prophet, although I believe that it's a gift to the body of Christ. But, but something to, to just to clarify that, pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, those are the five-fold ministry that Jesus gave to the church. Those are not self-identified. Those are identified on you by someone of spiritual authority. So you don't wake up one day and go, I am Apostle Michael. Everybody should listen to me. It's ApostleMichael.com. Please follow me. No. The, the gift, those gifts are appointed. They are offices, just like we respect um, uh, offices and authority. Just like when you go to the office, there is a, a someone who sits in an office of authority, and they have uh, jurisdiction or authority to serve well. Well, Jesus has appointed men and women it's not gender specific, but men and women to, to lead the body of Christ. Those are the fivefold ministry. Now, that's a whole other message and teaching. But, but then he says, this is the, the gift of the spirit of, of prophecy. And, and so I, I hope I've tweaked your interest because I want you to understand today that if, if God has appointed for all people to prophesy, and we're going to look at this in the scripture, then that means you can hear him. Because he wouldn't tell you to speak something that's from God if he wasn't going to 
give you ears to hear the word from God. And some of us are in the situations we're in or we're tolerating less than God's best in our lives because we haven't stepped into the place of authority to prophesy. You're not always going to see what you want in your marriage, but you can declare God's best through a prophetic word. God, this is the marriage that you said. This is what you said for me. This is what, that woman, this is the woman you're supposed to give me. Now, this is not selfish ambition. That's that's the man. That man is supposed to cut straight lines in the grass. And you are blessed among women because your husband does. But it's not this selfish thing. This is about, a, a prophecy is about the word of the Lord that gives glory to the Lord. This is about giving glory to God. And the lives that we have are, sometimes we settle because we haven't learned this place of, man, you're a sheep. You're a friend of God. But you're a prophet. And and it's the benefit, watch this, it's the benefit of our lives to be in a community of people around us that can speak the word of the Lord, and then also to be someone who speaks speaks the word of the Lord, because you need a word today. I need a word today, but there are also people around us that need a word today. And so sometimes we get this, uh, we add some mysticism or maybe some misunderstanding or sometimes just ignorance of not realizing what this prophecy is. And, And so Old Testament, we see it more the office of the prophet, but then in the New Testament, we see that that Jesus has actually given us all the ability to to prophesy. And uh, and so let's get into that today. Are you ready? Say ready. All right, Numbers 11, 24 through 29. This is Moses and the people of Israel. So I want to give you some uh, kind of some context, Old Testament, of, of where this came up. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the 70 men of elders of the people, and he placed them around the tabernacle. That was the, the place of worship. It would kind of be, it would be like the church. It was a sprung structure. It looked kind of like this. Maybe. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and he spoke to him. Look, look at that. What are, we, what are we talking about? Frequency is a series about God speaking and us hearing. So here is God speaking to his people. Everybody say spoke. And he took, and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them. So here's what I want you to understand. God spoke and they had the ability to hear God because the spirit rested on them. You can't hear the voice of God without the spirit. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, he is the one that enables believers to hear the voice of God. So anytime you see the speaking of God or the hearing of God, the Spirit's involved. So don't be telling me that Jesus went to the cross and then he went to heaven and then the Spirit isn't speaking because I need the Holy Spirit. How about you? I need, I need him more today than I did yesterday. And our world needs him more tomorrow than they're going to need him today. Like we need the Spirit of God active and moving amongst the people of God. And he says, he placed the same spirit on the 70 elders and it happened when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, everybody say prophesied, although they never did so again. So this was like a one moment thing. They prophesied, then they didn't do it again. I'll tell you why in just a second. But two men had remained in the camp. The name was Eldad and the name of the other was Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. And they were among those listed who had not gone out to the tabernacle, yet they prophesied in the camp. So check this out. This is all in there for a reason. I know it's early. It's Sunday morning. You were probably up late watching the Braves get their pants beat off. If you're a Philadelphia fan, we're mad at you right now. Well, watch what happens. The tabernacle is the place of meeting where God's presence was there, spoke to Moses. Now the speaking, the word of God speaking now has come out of the tabernacle. That's significant because it's a foretelling about something that's going to come in the future. It says, but, and the spirit rested upon them and now they were among those listed. Verse 27, and a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and me dad And you, dad, are prophesying, I added the you, dad part, are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, no joke necessary there. 
Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Stop this. What is happening? There is speaking and hearing of the voice of the Lord outside of the tabernacle. Something is wrong. Right? That's what he's doing. But then what does Moses say? Moses said to him, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Notice this. Moses said, oh, that God would fall, that his presence would fall on all the camp, on all the people. Now, this is Moses, the spokesman for the Lord and the one who went to the mountain. And and notice that God called all the people up to the mountain, but they sent Moses as their representative. Sometimes we do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. We say there are spiritual leaders and then there's me. And what that does is it creates a gap in a place where God speaks to them, but he doesn't speak to me. And I want to let you know today God's original plan, just like he walked in the garden with Adam and Eve and spoke to regular human beings, Adam and Eve, he wants to speak with you and give you ears to hear his voice. And Joshua, even Joshua protested and said, hold on a second, this, this shouldn't be. This is outside of, you mean, there's prophecy happening outside of the church. What? Stop it. You mean people go to work and prophesy? You mean people in their homes prophesy? You mean people pray over the food in their house? And it's just instead of saying amen and digging in, they prophesy and they declare God's best over, you mean when, 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 when they're just going around regular life, day in and day out, people are prophesying, stop it. And Moses said, no, it's a part of God's original plan that all people would prophesy everywhere. You dad, me dad, we dad, all the dads. Everybody. And Moses was declaring God's heart. And we actually see this happen. Now fast forward. Anybody remember Acts chapter 2? Jesus has ascended to heaven. He's beat death, hell, and the grave. And he said, it's better that I go to heaven because I'm going to send you a gift. He is the advocate. He is the very spirit in the presence of God. And it happens. Let's look at it. Acts 2, 16 through 18. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Not some flesh. All flesh, men, women, old, young, black, white, every color, every race, every ethnicity, all people. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. This is worth saying again. You can tell if you're young or if you're old. Just by that. If you're young, you're seeing visions. I see lots of visions because I'm young. You may dream dreams. That means you're old. That's okay, but at least God's speaking to you still. Okay, so I'm kidding. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, men and women. You say, why are you emphasizing that so much? Because we got some crazy weird thinking that says, God blesses men, but he holds back on women. Shame, shame, shame. That's not the word of the Lord. He does not hold back. You need both equally. Not just equally in society. We need them equal in the workplace, the home place, and the church place. We need them active because aren't you glad that the Spirit... Listen, women, aren't you glad that the Spirit of God doesn't just fall on your husband? Oh, you got the glory. And I know sometimes they, well, I got the... I'm I'm the man. I'm the... You better hold yourself. Both of you submit yourself to the Lord. The husband leads, but both of you can hear and prophesy and declare the word of the Lord and hear together. It's not a man's world. It's not a woman's world. It's God's. We we belong to him. And he established this from the very beginning. So, so he there, that, this is one of the, uh, the uh, and we, I have more on this if, if you want it, but, but Amy and I, we feel called, not all couples, pastor together. But she is equally the senior pastor as I am. We both feel called equally to pastor LifeGate Church. And one of the foundational uh, scriptures that substantiate this, and not everybody's used to it, and sometimes it, it kind of messes with our tradition or what we're used to, but we both feel equally 
equally called because it says your sons and your daughters prophesy. We need our the women in our church and the men are better empowered and equipped within our church because of the spirit of the Lord that's upon her. There should be a better amen from women in this room. You are, being, you are being empowered to walk in the gift and the anointing on your life because God gives it to both. He doesn't hold back. Aren't you glad that he gives it equally to both of us? And it says, on my maid servants, or my men servants, my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. So number one today, all can prophesy. Not just some, all can question is, do you desire to? Do you learn to? Do you develop this gift and accept and receive the gift? First Corinthians, I know we're, we're, we're taking a kind of a trail through the scripture here, but I want to give you uh, just a, a foundation here so you understand this has always been a part of God's plan. First Corinthians 14, 31, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Notice all, all, all. Do you realize what all means in the Greek? Hebrew? All. You, me, our kids. Here's that thing that says kids say the darndest things. Y'all remember that? Man, kids prophesy. They say things sometimes you're like, what? What would you just say? Not when you just... When you get older, not when you've been through this school and that school, I'm all for education, I'm all for preparing, and I'm all for that, but there is nothing like when the Spirit of the Lord rests upon your kids, rests upon your church. All can prophesy. In Acts 2, I love this, Acts 2 is a fulfillment of what Moses prayed, that all of the people were prophets, not just some, but all of them. Notice that the 70 in, in, the, in the scripture in number, notice the 70 prophesied, but never again. So they did for the moment, but never again. Why? Because the Holy Spirit rested on them for the moment. But then Jesus came and he said that now the Holy Spirit doesn't just rest on you, now the Holy Spirit rests in you. And so I know there, there are manifestations and, and where, where almost you feel something physical, like, like uh, maybe chill bumps, maybe a weight. You, you remember when you went to the dentist before they did the technology and stuff where they just, you know, shot the x-ray with a gun? I went the other day and they did that. It was incredible. They shot a gun at my face and that was the x-ray. That was it. I said, where's the heavy coat? You know, that heavy thing that they, the, the what is it called? The apron that they, they, they put on you. And, 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 and they said, we, we don't have to do that anymore. And I said, well, that's pretty cool. But it, but it serves, for old school dentist people, you, re, you realize that that weight or that, that sometimes that's a manifestation that we feel uh, from the Holy Spirit. There's a glory means weight. And so there is that, but do you understand that the Holy Spirit is now, because of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is within you, not just on you. So you may not always feel it, but he's there. You may not always yield to him or listen to him. I mean, I listen to him all the time, but maybe you don't. So it, it doesn't, maybe we don't hear him or, or we listen to him, but, but it doesn't mean he's not speaking and it doesn't mean he's not present. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. How could Jesus promise that I would never leave you nor forsake you? How can we sing and declare songs that I go in the valley, but I'm coming out of the valley? That I go into the fire, but he's walking with me in the fire. That I may, I may experience a flood in my life, but I'm not gonna be overtaken. How? Because the Spirit of God dwells within us. So I just, I wanna, I wanna encourage you right now. I wanna encourage you that no matter what situation you find yourself in, it may, be, it may be desperate, it may be little desperate, big desperate. It may be the most desperate situation you have ever been, but if you will trust in who you believe in, like Amy said, the Holy Spirit is right there. He is your help in time of trouble and he will never leave you nor forsake you. You may not feel him, but he's there. Grab a hold of that. You go into situations. Listen, Amy and I, sometimes we, 
don't know about you, but I, we go into rooms that we don't always want to walk into those rooms. We walk into situations that sometimes we don't always want to walk in. But you know what we do? Before we step into the room, we thank you. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I thank you that the Spirit of God rests in me. That I'm not a carrier of Michael. I'm a carrier of the very glory and the presence of God. And if I need to speak, I thank you that you give me the words to speak. If I need to pray and be silent, Lord, shut my lips and don't let anything that comes out that, that would fall to the ground. But let every word that proceeds from my mouth be the heart of God and what is good for people, what is prosperous, what will be fruitful for other people. Do you see what I'm saying? Listen, one of the things, we're going to talk about how we can prophesy and edify and encourage others, but sometimes you got to wake, no, every day you got to wake up and go, I'm going to prophesy to myself. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm going to declare, before we can ever begin to declare it over others, we need to begin to declare the glory of the word of the Lord over our own lives. Well, I, I need a word from God from somebody. I need from somebody to tell me what God's saying. The Holy Spirit lives within you, and you can turn to heaven, and he is speaking loud and clear. You might not like what he's saying, but you can open your word. You can trust in his voice, and you can lean in, and guess who is speaking? Guess who longs to speak to you? Guess who is your friend? Guess who is your great shepherd? The Holy Spirit. And he's right there. Woo! I want to take one step without hearing him. I don't want to face one situation without hearing him. I want to be able to hear and lean in to the voice of the Lord. John 1, 33, it says, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. This is John the Baptist speaking about Jesus' baptism. And he said, hey, when you see the Spirit descend, and I want you to see the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. The Spirit descends in the New Testament, and he remains. Everybody say remain. So he doesn't descend and then leave you. The Holy Spirit isn't on you when you come to church and then jumps off and goes in the closet before you head to work. He doesn't, he doesn't, when, when you start feeling anxiety, he doesn't tuck his tail and run. When you deal with the same thing that you've been dealing with for a decade, he doesn't go, oh, you stink. He doesn't go, oh, I'm not helping you this time. You got yourself in this mess. You'll get yourself out. He doesn't do that. He doesn't play games. No, 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 no. He begins to declare over you, this is who you are. This is your identity. You aren't what you do. You're who the word of, the God, word of God says you are. Your identity is found in Jesus and who he says you are. You couldn't fix yourself. We couldn't get ourselves out of the situation before. How are we ever going to do it now? We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the comfort and the relationship of the Holy Spirit. And now let's, let's move. So now this is not just something to us. This is something through us. Everybody say, through me. So he said the Holy Spirit is going to remain on you. And, and I, I remember uh, there's just been different instances uh, in, in mine and Amy's lives. And, and uh, we grew up, I say our lives like we've known each other forever. And it's kind of been like that. We met at 9 and 11. And we grew up in church together. We grew up in a church where her parents taught us and the pastors of that church taught us that we could hear the voice of God. And that we could, we could actually share with others or communicate with others what, what God was saying. And uh, uh, several years ago, we took a trip to Nashville, and uh, we took some of the team, some of the staff, and, and, and we went and, and just had an incredible time there at YWAM in Nashville. And the, we practiced hearing the voice of God, and then, and then we actually went, this is kind of crazy, we went to a mall and, and, and said, okay, Holy Spirit, we just make ourselves available to you. And if you want to say something to us for somebody else, we just, our ears are turned towards you, and so w will you speak to us? Well, guess what? He did, and I'm just being for real. I was like, I don't know if I'm just thinking this or this is just weird or I'm just making it up, and, and I just decided to believe. I just decided to, well, let's say, I'm like, I'm in Nashville. That's a long way from Villa Rica. I'll never see these people again in my life. <laughs> and so I said, well, let's try it. 
And so me and a friend, we're walking by this store, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord. He said, there, there's a person in this store, and, and, uh, and gave me kind of a, a picture of what, there was something in the store, and it was like a um, Southwest design. And, and I was like, there's not going to be a Southwest design in a store. And I was just hoping, I was like, that's just thing. So sure enough, we walk in the middle of the wall, in the mall, I look, and exactly there's this Southwest design hanging on the wall in, in the store. And I looked up, and I said, that's not the Spirit of the Lord, you know, and, and, and then and he said, yep, that's me. And, 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 and then I looked and I was like, there's nobody in the store. <laughs> so I was like, it couldn't be you. So I, I walk in the store, seriously, walk in the store, turn around, and there was nobody in the store and walked out. And I was like, huh, that just that wasn't, that wasn't the spirit of the Lord. Then he said, yeah, there was somebody in there. And I said, who? He said, the person who works in the store. I said, I can't talk to the person who works there behind the counter. He said, that's all right. You're not going to. I am. I said, okay. So I told the guy I was with, I said, hey, I'm just kind of feeling this and sensing this. I don't know if it's, if it's real or not. And he said, man, let's, let's try it. Let's see. So I walked up to her and I said, hey, I know this, sound, this may sound really crazy. I'm not from here. I didn't tell her where I was from. But, uh, but I was praying this morning and the Lord just began to, to show me this. I, I talked to the Lord and I believe he talks to me. And I believe he has something for me to, to share with you. And as I began, I didn't have the whole pad, the whole word, the whole thing, but as I began to speak, tears began to flow. And, and here I am in the back of my head, I'm worried about other people coming in the store. I'm worried about what's gonna happen. What, but that I just began, and she just stopped and began to, and I just began to ask her some questions, and she goes, she just said, yeah. And, and, then, and then just as I begin to talk and just share with it, she said, yeah, that's me. And, and, and through that process, the word of the Lord was able to speak through just a regular person who didn't believe it all the way, wasn't this giant spiritual hero, just somebody that said, hey, maybe this is God and he wants to speak. And she right there, I mean, it, this exceeded what I ever thought. I just thought maybe this was going to be some exchange. We'll pray for you. She she repented, gave her life to Jesus. Then we began to pray over the other situations in her life. And then, and then as soon as we said amen, and she said, thank you so much for hearing God and speaking to me. He's been telling me that he's been drawing me. There's been these situations that have been getting to happen. And I said, praise God, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm Michael from Villarica, by the way. I pastor LifeGate Church. And <laughs> so, so get... Guess what? Right, right then, we turned around to walk out of the store. About five people walked into the store and began shopping. And it was like the Lord just, just took control of the situation, took control of my fear, my anxiety. And I don't say that to say, oh, you know, I, I'm this, I'm that. No, I'm, I, through the whole thing, I'm like, this ain't God. I ain't doing that. I'm going to look stupid. And we get so worried more about what we're going to look like instead of who God looks like for other people. And, and what we had, and, and, and then here's the deal. Maybe you say, well, that, that, that is crazy. I could never do that. Don't say never, because God can do anything. But, but, but maybe start with the person that lives in your own house. Maybe start with the, some of the most precious and prophetic or encouraging and challenging words that I have, I have received are from my own, in my own house where Amy spoke the word of the Lord over me. Where my mom and dad, when I was growing up, spoke the word of the Lord over me. They, they said, man, this is what the, the Lord is saying. And so I want to show you this. How, how, who can prophesy? Everybody. All, all can prophesy. First Corinthians, it says, for all prophesy one by one that all may learn, that all may be encouraged. And so this is, this is really important that we understand what what. When we say prophesy, what's the difference in, in uh, because sometimes we think, well, that prophecy is correction or prophecy is, um, is uh, challenge. And it can be challenged, but it's not in, in the nature to admonish. Listen, God challenges us, speaks to us, corrects us all the time. Yes? Yeah, but that's not prophecy. God, God 
he, that's, that's not the way prophecy. Prophecy is for edification, for building up, and for comfort. That's what the scripture says. What is, what is edification? That, that means encouragement. It means to, to build up, to support. What is comfort? It means to, to wrap around. And, and so how do we test this and, and, and wonder, okay, how do we know if this is a prophetic word or not? We, we test it with the scripture. And so he, here's a couple of ways to test. If somebody comes up and they say, hey, I've got a word for you. I, I feel like God is saying, Saying this to you. Does it, is it scriptural? Does it line up with the word of God? If it doesn't, God's not going to speak outside of his word. So you can automatically just, just say, well, well, that's not scriptural. Uh, pastor Tony, uh, our founding pastor, Amy's dad, uh, he has a funny story. He was at a conference one time, and, and uh, this was years ago, and, and a lady walked up to him, and, and, and she said, I've got a word, of God, word from God for you. And he goes, wow, that's, that's really cool. What is it? And he says, you're going to find your wife at this conference. And he stopped and said, well, my wife at home is not going to like that very much. <laughs> so obviously, that, that's not a word from God. Somebody else would walk around saying, have you gotten your word today? You know, they would walk up. And, and this, this gets kind of gimmicky. You know, we got to be careful that we don't use it for our own, uh, our own good. This is, we're, we're, we're being a vessel that God is working through. And, and so, hey, have you gotten your word for today yet? And, 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 and Tay would say, well, if you were a prophet, you would know. <laughs> have you stopped by the booth to get your word today? Nothing wrong with praying and hearing God for people, but we got we to be careful. One of, the third commandment in the, in the Old Testament is do not take the Lord's name in vain. Now, that, that means that we don't use cur, cur, curse with the Lord's name. I, I get that. But it also means in vain means selfishness. So it means that I would not use the things of God for selfish gain. This isn't about me. This is for his glory. The Holy Spirit always magnifies Jesus and magnifies the glory of God. He is not on us or in us to magnify ourselves. And you got to watch this, man, especially today. More and more we see the anointing, we see the power of God work on ministries and work on people, but it becomes about them. And the Bible makes it very clear, pride comes before the fall. You got to watch this. So, so prophecy, all can prophesy, but prophecy is not manipulation. I don't prophesy for my own gain. You don't, you don't think what you want for somebody or feel what you want for somebody and communicate that to them and say, thus saith the Lord. You know, for instance, I, I love there's a praline cheesecake that Amy makes. It touches my spirit, soul, and body, all three. So, for instance, I would say, Amy, I was praying the other night and thus saith the Lord. Once a month, you shall maketh the pralineth cheeseth caketh. I would encourage you, just take away, thus saith the Lord. And start like this. Hey, hey, I was, hey, E-Man, I was praying for you this morning. And I felt like the Lord, he impressed this on me. And I just want to encourage you with this. And here's something I always ask people. Hey, this is what I'm, I'm sensing and I'm hearing. And I always ask people, this is a very humble, and I'm not saying I am humble. I'm saying here's a humble approach to it. Ask them, does that meet with your spirit? Does that meet and confirm some of the things that the Lord has been speaking to you? And, and you know what? Some people have said, no. Nope. And then I say, well, you're wrong because I heard the Lord, you know. <laughs> but, but my point is that it's not this, ooh, thus saith the Lord. It may be for your kid on the way to work on the way to school, it, it, it may be the cashier at the register. What we do is we turn our ears towards heaven and we say, God, this is not for me. God, would you, would you speak to me? You say that all would prophesy. Lord, give me ears to hear what you would say. You know, it's mine and Amy's prayer that, you know, we, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit and we encourage that. We have different series and and we, we teach about that, but, but you know, there's not a group of people at LifeGate or in local churches that that's the group of people that prophesy. I believe God's calling the church to prophesy. That everywhere you go, the word of the Lord lives inside of you. 
He's just waiting for you to let it out. And sometimes you don't have the whole picture. Sometimes it's just a piece or a part. But if you'll just step out in faith and, hey, I'm, this is what I'm hearing and sensing. I, does, this, does this meet with your spirit? And just begin to encourage them. It's encouraging. It's uplifting. Is it the scripture? And then does it meet with the spirit? A great test to use. And be real careful with it, but don't be scared of it. There were prophets in the Old Testament. This is in my notes, and you can take a look at it. In Jeremiah, they, they, there were prophets that, that, that would take the word of the Lord, and they would actually use it to manipulate and to lead people, and, and it broke the heart of God. He was like, this is, this is crazy. This is wrong. How could you take this and lead people in a, in a wrong way? One of the things that was so sad to Amy and I is through the pandemic, false prophets that would exalt themselves and try to tell people this is what's happening, and this is that. And it wasn't the word of the Lord. It wasn't, it wasn't in scripture. It wasn't encouraging. It, it wasn't any of those things. It, it pretty much bred fear in the body of Christ. And we saw Christians tucking their tails and running instead of standing in the authority and the word of the Lord and saying, this is less than God's best. We're here to be a voice of encouragement and hope in the world. We are living in a world that is hopeless. And we are the voice of hope. We are the voice of encouragement. The word encouragement means to give courage. And so when you see discouragement, that means to take courage. But when you see encouragement, that means we are people that give courage. That's the, that all would prophesy, that all would encourage, that all would edify. That's for all of us to do. So prophecy is is encouraging. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says, pursue love. How, how many of you, give, give me a hand. How, how many of you want to pursue love? All right, number two, he says, and desire spiritual gifts. How many of you want to desire spiritual gifts? Good. Then he says, but especially that you may prophesy. How many of you desire to prophesy? He says, just like you want to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, that, that, that especially desire that you would prophesy. In verse 3, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, comfort to men. There's a guy named Barnabas in the Bible. Barnabas and Paul were really popular New Testament, uh, like a dynamic duo and traveled together and they were missionaries. Barnabas is original name was Joseph and it means exalted so his parents named him Joseph but but then he was renamed Barnabas Barnabas means son of encouragement and his friends the the disciples they ended up naming him Barnabas because they said if if listen if if encouragement had a son it would look like you son of encouragement here's something for all of us to consider if your friends could name you something, what would they name you? Son of anger. Daughter of frustration. Son of anxiety. Daughter of fear. What would they name you? So that, that's, not a, that's not a very nice way to land the plane. But I really feel like that's what what the Holy Spirit is saying us today, if all should prophesy, if all should desire to be that of encouragement, and I'm not saying we all have the same personality and the same mannerisms and that we all look in this way, but we can all be encouraging. We can all be one who comforts. We can all speak words. We can listen, not just for ourselves, but be in a position to hear for others. What if every single person in this room today made the decision to say, I don't want to just hear God for me, but I want to hear God for others this week. I want to have my ear turned towards heaven. I don't want to just be Joseph that's exalted. I want to be a son of encouragement. I want when people see me coming, they see an encourager. They, they see somebody that they're going to get comforted by. They're going to get strengthened by. Not by my words, not in my own strength, not in my own power, but I tap into a source that is greater than me, greater in me than he who is in the world. You, you, some of you today, you say, I'm so discouraged. Then today you need to grab a hold of the encourager. You need to grab a hold of the Holy Spirit, the one who lives inside of you and be encouraged and be lifted up. You say, man, I'm, I'm facing some stuff right now that I don't even know how I'm gonna get through. Then look to somebody else and see how maybe you can encourage and help them get through something. Look beyond our scope because as long as we're looking at ourselves, we'll never see the people around us that need the gift of prophecy that lives in you. 
Perhaps you've been stepping and using this gift and you didn't even know it. That moment that you just felt out of nowhere, you need to send a text to encourage somebody. Hey, I'm praying for you, thinking about you. This is a scripture that I thought they would encourage you. You know what that is? It's the gift of prophecy. That phone call that you needed to make, that, that detour that it, on the way to your cubicle, you said, you know what, I need to check on this person. And you just, you took a different route. Maybe you just felt like, I don't even know why I went there that, that day. I don't even know what, what happened. It's because the Holy Spirit was in control of you. He really believed it when you said he could use your life and, and take your, your stuff. And you go, well, we, we were sitting down. Anybody ever went to dinner with somebody and you sat there and, 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 and you just began to open up in conversation and the time just flew. And it wasn't because you were, you were having a good, you know, just because it was a good time, all of a sudden it's like the Lord took control of the conversation and all of a sudden it was like time stood still and it was divine and you were like, man, it was like the word of the Lord and you, you stood up and you were encouraged and you felt like you could, man, you could take on hell with a water pistol, although you never would, but, but you just felt like something inside of you. I mean, I can do it. I can make it. You know what that is? It's the spirit of prophecy. And we should all desire the gift of prophecy. I'm a prophet. You're a prophet. Now, I would encourage you, don't go to work shouting to everybody that you're a prophet. But today, could we just take a moment and recognize that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. For those of you who call Jesus your Lord, He lives and dwells inside of you. He rests in you and through you. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God comes and moves in and through our lives. And as we desire that and believe, Lord, would you come as a fresh wind? You know, the, the song we're about to sing, the team's going to lead us into a moment. And I'm just going to ask you, what's the Holy Spirit saying, you, saying to you today through the word, through the message? And I just want you to simply respond to him. And that may be meaning stay in the seat where you are and turn the seat you're in into an altar. It may just mean stand there and worship and lift your hands. It may mean come to this altar and just come and have a moment with the Lord. Maybe you're here today and what he's speaking to you is that you need to believe in me and put your trust in me for the very first time. Maybe he's saying, hey, you need to come back to me. That feeling and that sense, that's his voice speaking to you. Can't say you don't hear him because he's speaking to you today, drawing you to himself. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? Maybe you're in the room or if you're online today, I want to talk just to you. If you right now feel like something's happening, something's stirring in your spirit, like he's speaking to you, drawing you to himself. You, you would say, Michael, today I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I hear him drawing me to a relationship with him. That first step is called salvation. It means that he wants to begin a relationship with you, that, that you can begin today by believing and putting your trust in him. It also means that, that when you die, that you belong to him and that you would end up in a place called heaven, not separated from him in a place called hell. Those are both real places, but, but he created you to be in relationship with him now and forever and into eternity. So today, is that you? Today, do you need to say yes to Jesus? He's paid the price. He already did everything that needed to be done. He just needs you to accept this free gift of salvation. We're not going to embarrass you or call you out. I'm not going to make you say anything or do anything. But if you need to meet Jesus today for the first time, or maybe you need to come back to him, I'm just going to ask you to be so bold just to lift up your hand and put it right back down. If you today say today, Michael, yes, today I need Jesus, just slip your hand up, put it right back down. If you're watching online right now, you can right there. Thank you, sir. I saw you in the room. If you're watching online, you can put something right there in the, in the comment, comment bar. Just, hey, that's me today. I'm praying that prayer. Today I need Jesus. I need to begin this relationship with him. I'm going to give you some words to say as you commit your life to Jesus. The deal's done. Is if you said yes and in your heart. The Bible says that when you believe, you're saved. But I'm going to give you some words to pray in your heart as a commitment to him. Your prayer might sound like this. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Jesus, I believe you're real. I believe you came and you died on the cross. And I believe on the third day you rose again. And you beat death and sin and, and all that separated me from you. I was your enemy and now I'm your friend. Thank you, Jesus, for paying that price. Thank you for, for paying my way into heaven. That one day when, when life is over here, that I'll spend eternal life in a place called heaven. 
Today, for those of you that are coming back to him, just tell him, Lord, today I'm coming back to you. I surrender everything to you. I've been doing it my own way. I'm done with that. Today, turn my life over to you. I surrender all to you, Jesus. I love you. Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. In your name I pray, amen.